This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning on 101 ESPN. Along with Jay Delsing, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Two hours coming your way before you sit back, relax, and enjoy a little bit of the NFL season. But before we get to that, we got to say good morning to Jay Delsing and nothing. We'll relax you any more on a Sunday than talking golf with Jay. We're going to put him right to sleep, folks. It's like <laughs> I told you when we went from one hour to two. Danny Mac and I, if you don't fall asleep at church on Sunday, tune in. That's a shot at us, and I don't like that. Uh, it's, I feel like it's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we like to do, we like to go through many of the news and notes throughout the week. I think something that we'll do later in the show that uh, people will really love is going through a tip segment. Now you say, can you do tips over the radio? And yes, you can. Uh, and if you've ever heard Jay do this, he does a wonderful job of explaining, especially from the perspective of a right-handed golfer, how to hit certain shots on the course, how to prepare for a certain round, things around the green, putting, all those things. So we're going to get into all that. It's always fun for you to do. I know you love doing that. I do. I really do. I, I mean, Danny, the part that gets weird is that you're, if you try to give a full lesson on one club over the radio. It just gets it just gets blurred. People are, you know, their eyes will glass over and off they go. So so what we're we're trying to do is general high level stuff, but really something one even if it's just one of the components, grab onto it so that you can hang your hat onto it and it can really help your game. It really and truly can. And you know, I do this stuff when we play. Oh, you do it all the time. I've seen you the best thing I've ever seen you do are the pro ams. <laughs> Okay, now you've done a lot of business outside of golf that comes from being on the golf course. Hopefully that makes sense what yep. I just said. But you giving a lesson on the golf course. I'll give you a great example. My daughter, Avery, you're her teacher, and she may or may not have skipped a little school this week to prepare for a <laughs> tournament that she's competing in in uh, Nashville today. But you were giving her an on-course lesson and there's a difference between sitting at family golf and learning center yep. or listening on the radio or to actually be in the midst of a pro like yourself and playing golf and going through the 18 holes yeah there's no doubt and if you're gonna go practice and by the way you're great on the pro ams that's what i wanted to say thank you very much but adam family golf and learning center that's, that's the, place the place to go, to go. We, are, we don't we know that but we know we were out playing and it's so the, the beauty of that is danny is you get the you're in the action. You don't have to worry about duplicating a scenario or a lie. This is it, you know. And and what what the beautiful thing about golf is it the the numbers are never perfect. It's always a little six or a hard eight or it's in between. And you got to learn how to figure that out. And your daughter is so talented, and I mean, it swings beautifully. And to get to go through some of those things with her were, were important. You know, it's like this is where, when it's a time to do X. And for the most part, her golf instincts, and you see them, I mean, you played more golf with her than I have, but you see them, they're strong and they're good. And Avery, got we didn't even announce this. She got player of the year this week. Yes, she did. How about that? Very player proud of, of her. Year, she also, yeah, three-time All-State. You know, I anchored the uh, Visitation State uh, Championship team, played in the last group, and brought it home and finished seventh herself, which is um, a, actually accomplished a goal that she set for herself. And then next year we're going to accomplish the next one, which is going to be put her name on that trophy and, and, and that. So, yeah. Well, one of the things you taught her, though, and you've taught many people in the pro-ams that I've watched you do, uh, is the fact that you get people to hit a knockdown. Yeah. And that is something, so you and I were playing this past week. We had beautiful weather in St. Louis. It was 65, 70 degrees, got up to 80 at one point. But as you know, at this time of year, you get that kind of weather, it's going to get really windy. You yep. hit a knockdown. Yep. Knockdowns are not an easy shot, at least for the common golfer to hit. Right. Well, it's because there's a couple of components that you need to add. It's not a normal shot. As you said, it, the, the trajectory goes lower. And I got to tell you, 
for someone like your daughter, Avery, when you get to give her a tiny bit, the smallest bit of information and watch her run with it. I mean, it's like her favorite shot. She's like, I'm like, Avery, what'd you hit? She goes, I'm a little knock seven. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's so good. And you see her, yeah. you know, hitting that little, that abbreviated finish and that ball going in there lower. And you're like, it's, I mean, it's beautiful to watch. And then you see her turn around on the next par three and take this thing and the, this eight iron she hits falls out of the sky, you know? So it's a super high shot, soft landing on the green. What about the shot she hit at number 10? The par five, she smashes one way down there and hits this skyrocketing three iron. It stays on the 10th green at Bell Reef, which it's hard to land a yeah, lawn dart on that green, man. That green is so narrow and it's pushed so far up and she hits this moon unit three iron that comes out of there and she's got like a 20 footer for eagle i'm like you can't teach that no so we're going to get yeah. into a tip segment coming up later in the show which is always fun and i love getting into the weeds so to speak on yeah. the various shots and various things you can do to practice your game of golf with jay delsing now let's get into some of the news of this past week specifically on the pga tour we had Matt Horner on this past week about uh, what this Worldwide Technology Championship was all about. It's the neatest sport in that you play with the professionals that are playing the game. I, I'm not going to get on a football field with <laughs> some of these NFL players Thank and say, God, hey, right? yeah. throw me a pass, um, you know, take my head off a bit, and you know, don't want to take a 100-mile-an-hour pitch either. But golf is that... Uh, a phenomenal mix of being able to play with athletes you look up to and enjoy watching and and you can be there right there playing alongside and it's just a great equalizer and and then it's in a usually a beautiful environment whether it's uh, out on the ocean or in the you know in different woods or cutting through different places that you haven't been before i mean just being outside and enjoying it for a few hours or, or so is just a, a great atmosphere to be a part of it was an amazing week for Matt Horner, Jim Cavanaugh, the group at Worldwide Technology, and a fun week to see that St. Louis was represented on the national stage and using golf as that way to get their message out. Danny, how cool is that? I sent both Jim and Matt, you know, um, texts. It's it's awesome. I mean, how about the picture you, you sent me of, of Jim and Tiger? And, you know, they're playing on a Tiger Woods golf course. It's the first golf course the PGA Tour has used that Tiger has designed. And it is, I mean, to get to associate the WWT brand, which is a national and worldwide brand, with the best golfer and the guy that moves the needle currently, I mean – it's just it's just phenomenal and and then to have the setting down in Cabo I mean story get much better man no uh, I, I found it interesting. A lot of folks wanted to talk to Tiger about not only that tournament, the course, but also his new golf league coming up. Yeah. And inevitably, you're going to be asked about your health. So you're, yep. you're there to promote certain things, but then some of the questions are going to go around, well, how's your game? How's yep. your health? And he said, basically, the fusion in his ankle is good. It's the surrounding areas around it that have been an issue for him. So still, I guess it's up in, in the air as to whether or not we'll see him at the Masters in April. But that's a long ways to go. I, I know, Danny. I've read the same thing, and I'm, I'm like, and, and so what? What do you, so like? If you've ever had, so when I had back surgery, one of the you you get these things. You're like, okay, cool. We fix the disc in your back. What's wrong with you? Well, I was laid up for X amount of weeks, and here's now, you know, my knee. What's like atrophy? Because you, fa yeah, and and then I and I favored this back for so long that now when I try to walk normally, all of a sudden. This goes out, and and tigers also you 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 borrow all this other energy and all these other muscles from all these other areas, Danny, that get overworked, and then they go out. And so what tigers dealing with? There's hip stuff, there's back stuff still, and, and you know what he's had five back surgeries. He's got, he's got a fused ankle, he's got a fused back, and the guys put together, you know, like a you know a the six million dollar man over there, and and. Um, it's 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 going to be interesting. I did read though where our buddy Stuart Sink, who's been on the show a couple of times, said Tiger's in full go mold. I mold, love that form where he's like it's full full go <laughs> mode. What am I talking about? I got and you. He's ready to roll. So Tiger is. So that means Tiger Woods is practicing again, D. And you know he's got the he's got his his hero world championship, but he's also got. 
at PNC, and I can promise you. He will play in that. Charlie Woods, did you see Charlie Woods closed with a 66? I saw that. Just a little 66. Isn't it amazing when you watch video of Charlie? We're talking about Tiger's son. The the way he looks, what he wears, how he walks, how he addresses the ball, his swing, it's a clone of Tiger. Synchronized. It's like synchronized golfing. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, the club twirl. He's it's it's almost like right on cadence. It's like here's impact, massive, you know, shoulder turn, hips are rotated through, and then all of a sudden here comes the twirl, and you're like, Wow. Yeah. What did you think of the reviews of his course? It was not great. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really mixed bag yeah. I, from the various uh, articles that I read about yep. it, you know, some felt it was too wide open. Yep. Others yep. felt, was this PGA ready? All those yep. things are, are, are some of the articles that I had read about that. Well, the scoring is is the the first thing that you notice, you know, that, that there's the, it was a birdie fest, which is what the PGA Tour is selling, quite frankly. But one of the things that happens, D, is you design this course, and it's a resort course. It's in Cabo San Lucas, man. It's a, a worldwide you know, vacation destination. destination. And what you want to do there when the folks are coming and paying to play golf, you want to get them through, you know, get your ball out and play, get your ball in the green, get the thing in the hole and let's go. So now you bring the best players in the world in and it just changes completely, you know? So basically, and and you got to remember when you're going to let these guys just launch and not have a whole lot of, you know, concern, you know, you know things are going to happen. So, but, but listen, it takes a, a minute to get the golf the golf course is as it is and it needs to mature and all that stuff and that's only got to take time but it also takes you need to have a tournament under your belt to know where to go okay and you're going to make considerations you're going to make adjustments tiger is not a world class golf designer yet he will be And I'm not even saying this is a bad course because it's not. But when you're putting the best players and you you put them to the test and you give out the money that Worldwide gave out, these boys are going to town, man. Well, how about Adam Long going back to last week at the Worldwide Technology Championship to this weekend, 69 consecutive fairways in a row that he hit. That's now a new PGA record. So maybe there's an indication that it was fairly wide open. I don't want to take anything away from what he accomplished. It's amazing. But still, 69 in a row is unheard of. Danny, I just sent him a text. I said, congratulations. He said, thanks so much. I said, Adam, I haven't hit 69 fairways in a month. (laughs) He's like, come on, man. I'm like, what an accomplishment. Yeah. I mean, I, it's it's really interesting. we got to get him back on the show and talk a little bit about it because, you know, the, the one that you want to know, like, which one did you miss? Exactly. You know what I mean? 69 in a row, you had to feel like your driver was on autopilot. That's even beyond autopilot. That's incredible. And I also want to know, who had the old record? Exactly. Wow. Amazing. The yeah. champion of the Worldwide Technology Championship, very emotional after he won, Eric Van Rowan. I was calm because uh, there's bigger stuff in life than golf. Um, if you look at my ball, we've got, you know, there's a little music note. It's a little faded now, but there's a little music notes on there and, and initials JT, and it's for John Trasma, our best friend. <laughs> Who's got melanoma and he's not going to make it? Um, and every shot out there today was for him. And when you're playing for something bigger than winning some silly trophy, you know, uh, it, it puts things in perspective. And at the end of the day, whether I won here or whether I lost here, it really did not matter. Um, so, yeah, you know, when something motivates you like that, whether you make a pot or miss a fight, who cares? You two guys were college teammates. You mentioned John was one of your teammates at Minnesota. How did you channel that emotion and not let it drag you down and have this beautiful result? It dragged me down. Um, you know, after Friday's round, I shot, I think, I sh- what did we shoot Friday? Eight under? Four, eight. Eight under on Friday. Um, and I get to my hotel room and I just break down in tears, you know? So it wasn't that calm all the time, but. When I step onto the golf course, I've got a freaking job to do. Um, And that's what it comes down to at the end of the day, do your job. And um, now we can celebrate and cry and um, do whatever you want. But until that last putt drops, you know, it's, it's, it's focus and it's do it for Trazzy.
If John's watching right now, is there anything you want to say to him and his family and your Golden Gopher family? Just that we love him so much, and uh, I'm still sort of in disbelief what he's going through, and I wish I could take all his pain away, but um, we're flying up to Minnesota tomorrow to go to go and see him on, on Tuesday morning. Um, I'll give him a high five then. Guys, congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Very emotional as he walked off the 18th with an eagle, and uh, emotional for many reasons, but pinpointing the uh, the fact that his best friend is going through cancer, and as he said, is not going to make it. So, very emotional time for him. Yeah, I, I mean, Danny, that's just, that's what's so great about sport in general, right? I mean, how do you get motivation? What motivates people? You know, Tiger Woods would you say something? even the slightly disparaging about Tiger's game and all of a sudden you get the best he's got. Absolutely. Same thing with MJ. When it, you give MJ a little uh, a little fodder for the locker room and it's lights out. I mean, he's going to hang 70 on you. And it's and it's and so it's really interesting to see these great athletes get some additional motivation. They're already great players, but to to get that extra push to put them over the top, it's it's just fantastic. It, everything that the texts that I got from the, the tour players were like, man, it was a great week worldwide, phenomenal partner, you know, Cabo getting to play for nearly 10 million bucks. In a, I mean, come on, man. How do guys focus? And I'm sure you dealt with various things in your playing career, good, bad, indifferent, sad, happy, whatever. But how do you get to the point where you can put that aside? So I'm asking a guy that played at the highest level. You ranked as high as 51st in the world at one point and a supreme athlete. How do you put that stuff aside and concentrate for four hours of putting the ball in the hole? It's you against the course. That is tough to do. You don't have a teammate. You don't have Scottie Pippen next to you. Right. I mean, God bless Michael. He was awesome. Don't yep. get me wrong. Oh, yeah. You brought up his name. But, I mean, it's you. It's one guy and trying to focus like that. How do you do it? I mean, is there something that you could probably pinpoint with it or not? You learn. You know, as a younger player, it was almost impossible. You had a fight with your wife. You said something happens, you know, you're, you're, you find a call home and your dad's, you know, getting some sort of weird test. It's stuff just – buries you in the front of your mind and it's almost like you can't think of anything else right but as you get older and as you learn to compartmentalize things you're like listen this is exactly you know what it is and it's maybe awful news maybe whatever I'm putting this in this box and I'm not opening this box for the next four hours. I'm going out and I'm going to do my job to the best that I can do. And Danny, sometimes you can do, you know, you know what it's like when your children are little and God forbid they got sick or something that when you weren't accustomed to parenting or weren't accustomed to, you know, that stuff trips you up. And then as you get older, you're like, listen, I've got to, if you can't do it, D, a lot of times you withdraw. You really do. You just pull out. You'll see somebody go, you know, like if, if, if my dad would have fallen ill at it, I'm, I mean, I'm out. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to do something like that. If or something happened to one of the kids, I, you're out. But obviously this thing that, that Van roy has been dealing with is been something that's on his heart and on his plate for quite a while. It's not brand new news, but it's something that means a lot to him. And, you know, God only knows what, stage they are at this you know this medical treatment for his buddy and and it's you know it's it's tough and i'm sure you know he maybe he got a call and talked to him the night before and the guy said come on man you know finish this off go 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 do this and whatever you can spur it on you can almost use that as additional fuel to get the job done that's Jay Delsey. I'm Dan McLaughlin. We're coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. We're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Jay is wearing, by the way, a yellow shirt inside the studios on this Sunday morning. Well, on Thursday, we had a great event that we were a part of. It was the Play Yellow Benefit, and it benefited the Children's Miracle Network Hospitals of Greater St. Louis, and they do just amazing things. They help out St. Louis Children's Hospital, SSM, Health Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. Both member hospitals, by the way, serve over 500,000 patients and families annually. So we're very fortunate in town 
not to just have one, but two nationally ranked CMN hospitals in St. Louis. And no child is ever turned away because of what they do. And this is Jack and Barbara's affiliation with Play Yellow. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first, the the man that is behind this, the chairperson, the board chair for this event at Top Golf on Thursday, Ken Evers. This is our a major fundraiser, along with having all our corporate, local sponsors, and dance marathons that support Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. The, the money helps both hospitals with their unrestricted funds. So instead of like a regular donation from their, um, their boards, this money will be for child life services, programs for not only the children, the families. It will be education, Thor uh, at, at uh, Cardinal Glennon. So it, it supports a whole bunch of uh, behind-the-scenes activities. And uh, about uh, all the money we raise except for our expenses for CMNH, Greater St. Louis goes to the hospitals, and we will, we uh, we will raise probably this year uh, north of 1.1 million for each of the hospitals. The greatest job I've had is being the chairman of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. It is the best unpaid job I've ever had in my life, and I'm 69 years old. So, um, the experience to look at the children's faces and the joy that we provide and the thanks that we get from the moms and the dads as they support our board members. Um, there is not a greater thing to be able to do than be able to serve these families. And that that's probably the greatest joy. That was so much fun Thursday, and you talk about it all the time. Top Golf, it's not Augusta, but man, is it a unifier of bringing people together, and that's just what golf does. Absolutely, Danny. First of all, thank you for emceeing. I mean, I had I had three people say to me, damn, we miss him. You know, that voice, they're like, it's like we're, we're just turning the Too radio. Kind. We just turn, nice. turn the TV on, but... But um, Melissa and Krista and the, the whole team, I mean, those guys do all the work. They're the warriors. We get to come in and, and spend a couple hours. How about the girls? How about Lily and, and, um, and Zoe and Tegan? And, I mean, just, just so cute. And, you know, these girls have been ill. They've been gone they've, through, they've gone through so much. It, it, it's just, it, you know, and it also, Danny, I couldn't help but think and reminisce about your tournament. You know, it was about a month ago or so, and, and all the money that you guys raised, and you had that video, you know, that video of the special needs kids, and you're like, man, our, it could have... You know, Very it blessed. could be one of our children. Mm, it could right. be us. And so it really, it really makes you feel good to give back to, and to be able to be involved in stuff like that. And you were the chairman for this year's event here in St. Louis. And Jack Nicholas's love for yellow started with, if you don't know the story, Craig Smith, the son of Barbara's minister and a passionate young fan in Jack's hometown, as many as you know, Columbus, Ohio. Craig was diagnosed in 1968. It was a rare bone marrow uh, cancer that he had, and it tragically ended his life in June of 1971 at the age of 13. Jack would call him frequently, and during one conversation following a win, Craig said he predicted victory because he was wearing his lucky yellow shirt. And the story, as you all know, Jay, goes beyond that because of what Jack did at the uh, 86 uh, Masters. It was just incredible. And when we had Barbara on the show and we, we and, and we also had Jack on the show and he talked about in 86 he's kind of rummaging through and he's 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 quite a ways back and he knows he's got an outside chance but he's not really thinking too much about it and he comes across that yellow shirt in a package and he looks at Barbara and she, and she goes why not of course why not why not and and look what it's done uh and and I can just remember D that um um the call. Yes, sir. The, yes, sir. On number 17. And he's got the yellow shirt. And the knew butter it was goes going up. in. Oh, that was just. I got so, goosebumps so thinking about it. I know. It. That is just. It, it's amazing. We get to get these athletes and get these these different folks from different walks of life, different sports to come on the show, talk a little bit about the experience. It's just amazing. All right. Let's tip our cap. And as we wrap up segment one, again, we're going to have a tip segment coming up. You don't want to miss that. I think it'll be really good for any golfer out there, no matter how advanced you are in your golf game or not. We're going to tip our cap, though, to the Metropolitan Amateur 
Golf Association. Uh, you and I were a part of that as well. That was Friday night. You and I have been busy. We're, 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 we're hustling, baby. We're, we're hanging out a lot. And it was the top amateur players being recognized, both girls, boys, men, and women throughout the area. And MAGA does an incredible job. The Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association of doing various things here in St. Louis. Yeah, so the tip of the cap is brought to you by our friends at Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood and Colin Byrne. 314-966-0303. Folks, any sort of vehicle. It says Volkswagen. Colin can get you anything. He is the best. And speaking of the best, the Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association, Tom O'Toole, is our president over there. Kurt Rowe runs it. Kurt, Kurt does a great job, a yeoman's task. He is there all at every tournament. He's setting up the golf course. He eats, drinks, sleeps this stuff. He cares deeply about the game. He's in this thing for the long haul and he's got someone like Tom O'Toole former president of the United States Golf Association at the helm over there as well and 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 directing them and uh it's just uh, you know they they run these things Danny to to give ourselves some outlets and and, and then um we get to kind of celebrate we get the kind of the best of the whole thing we get to celebrate with all these champions Avery McLaughlin's getting an award uh received an award I'm sorry on Friday and you think about all this stuff that these guys do and it's, it's just fantastic and you know a young man named Luke McLaughlin finished second in the player of the year runner-up for the boys and you know I think we need a recap. <laughs> anyway. If it includes a golf scholarship, I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Somebody call us. But anyway, that's that's the tip of the cap. And it's to the Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association. And Kurt and his team over there, they do such a fantastic job. And our tip of the cap is brought to our brought to you by our buddies, uh, Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood and Colin. And it's 314-966-0303. Colin, thanks so much for the support. We've got emails coming in later in the show. Jay at jdelsinggolf.com. Jay at jdelsinggolf.com. Also some news with Liv and PGA Tour members. That's coming up. Tips coming up. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. We're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, mostly young African-American females are making between fifty-five dollars and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, fifty-five dollars to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. Get ready to watch the legends of golf up close when they compete at historic Norwood Hills Country Club right here in St. Louis. The Ascension Charity Classic. We'll be back again with some of golf's greatest names. Steve Stricker, Padraig Harrington, John Daly, David Duvall, Bernard Longer, Justin Leonard, David Toms, and more will compete returning September 3rd through the 8th. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com for information. Are you driving an out-of-warranty car? It's only a matter of time before your out-of-warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year, which is four times the rate of inflation. If an unexpected breakdown happened today, would you be ready for that? Well, now you can be with a plan through CarShield. Even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. 
They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800-465-6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Hi, this is Adam Best from Family Golf and Learning Center. At FGLC here in Kirkwood, we feature a double-decker driving range, two large grass tees with Tahoma Bermuda grass. You want to work on your short game? We have a short game area, too, which features a 20,000-square-foot green, three bunkers, and zoysia surrounds. Also at Family Golf and Learning Center, don't forget about our nine-hole par-3 course, the indoor trackman simulators, and our performance center. If you're looking for the best golf instruction, regardless of skill, we can help. Find out more at FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. If you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, any maker model, then you need to visit the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. They are the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. My daughter and I both drive vehicles supplied by Colin and the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. And the reason we have them is because we know we can trust them. They made the car buying experience painless and very easy. Their customer service is second to none. They provided my daughter with a loaner car, when her Passat needed repairs. Every single step of the car buying experience was taken care of for us. You can reach Colin at 314-966-0303 and he will answer all of your questions and put your mind at ease. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood has new or pre-owned vehicles to be purchased or leased, whichever you prefer. Once you visit the Dean Team Volkswagen on Manchester and Kirkwood, you'll become a customer for life because they'll treat you like family. The Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, the official vehicle provider of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. This is Chris Nagel. And you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning rolls on on 101 ESPN as we come to you from the Car Shield Studios. As always, brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. Tips coming up a little bit later in the show. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. I want to hit you with this. Some interesting news concerning the PGA Tour and Live. PGA Tour members have been granted permission to take part in the Live Promotions event, which is coming up in December. Three-day event will award the top three finishes a place among a 48-man field for Live's third season. What do you think of that? I don't know. I mean, I th- first of all, I think that, that it's interesting that the tour has kind of looked the other way. or, or what, But what does that mean? So if you fit, let's say I go over there and I win this thing. What do I get paid for the year? Exactly. What are they giving me? What is it? And and did you read any of this other stuff about this relegation and all of this? Like anybody that's not in the top twenty four has a chance to be getting booted off, and now they're going to start trading players. Danny, it is so. It's it's almost like they're making this up as they go. I don't think they know how it's all going to work, and by. Saying that, you know, it was, I guess, probably four or five months ago, not not even that long, where they said, we're going to come together, we're going to make this thing work, and there has been absolutely no movement no. of having live players jump over to the PGA or vice versa. World golf rankings, a huge issue with this. Money, a huge issue with this. Jay Monahan, a huge issue with this. There's just no clarity into where the this is going, and if you love golf like we do, and if you're a fan out there, you're trying to figure out how this is all going to work out. Yeah, no, no kidding. And then here's what what else is interesting. How about how all the different suitors that have kind of backed up and tried to say to the PGA Tour, "Hey, we'll become your partners." I mean, they turned down um, the the um, uh, the sports media. Uh, a company, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on their name right now, but they turned them down. And supposedly, Danny, there's still five others left in addition to the the, the public uh, fund. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll tell you this. If they walk away from the public fund, the Saudi public fund, 
this thing's going to fire back up again. Oh, I would assume it would. Lawsuits to get fired. You have to. Uh, absolutely. And I mean, and you're going to get into the same issue with what are you going, are you going to try to, they're going to outspend you. They're going to, There, there's issues here though. One of the things that never got brought up because it, we talk a lot about the, the clots that, that the PGA Tour has full of junk that they don't want people to know. Well, if this thing goes down the line far enough, the Saudis are going to have to open their books as well. And we all know that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. They've already, so they- I can't see the PGA Tour opening up their books either, though. Yeah, well, they don't want to. (laughs) No. I can promise you they don't want people looking in there. And the other thing is the, 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 the judge already said because of the way this litigation has gone that- that the tour and th- their lawyers deserve to look in and and at, at the Saudis' books, and the Saudis were like, uh, "No, sir, no, sir." Yeah, and we're appealing that, and they said we'll take it all the way to the Supreme Court if they have to, because they're they're claiming diplomatic immunity to that law, and they're like, "This has nothing to do with diplomacy. This has this is a business and a and a, a business court, and you're not you're not granted that sort of immunity." So. Who the hell knows, man? But it's just, a, again, Danny, it's this murkiness that just leads you to wonder, like, what is going on? I've got to really wonder if you had Kepka and you had DJ and you had a Patrick Reed and some of the biggest names that made this jump, now that you're a year or two in, are they happy with it? Now, they're probably happy with the checks that they got. I'm, I'm not going to say they wouldn't right. be there. But deep down, are you really happy that you made the move? And I, I think it'd be different viewpoints on that. I, I think some would, and some would say, if I'm being honest, no, I miss it. That's the thing. Who's going to be honest? Because most of them are going to lie and say, of course I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? I You'd, you'd probably get... I think Kep could probably be one of the more honest guys. He was fairly yes. honest when he left. He's yeah. like, "Look, I didn't know about my knee. My career's Three. in jeopardy, and I'm I needed the you know not I'm, that I needed the money, but I get to make this chunk of money." Well, Danny, if you if what did he have? Three knee surgeries? Yeah, and two on one knee, one on the other. And I mean, if you're if you're that guy, I mean, we're all one swing away from ending our career, getting hit, you know, hit a hit your wrist on a root. And, in a car accident like Tiger did, who the hell knows what? I mean, absolutely, yeah. yeah there's no guarantees, but it this whole thing just you know there's a deadline of December 31st that's coming along for this framework agreement to be um, ratified, so to speak, through the PGA Tour, and there is I don't think there's any way in hell that doesn't get extended unless if they come back and say we're not doing it with the Saudis, all hell's got to break loose again, Danny. I think. My heart kind of melted when I saw this. 18 majors, 117 professional wins, tournament wins. We're talking about Jack Nicholas. He's now 83, and he said, quote, golf is no longer fun. Golf is no longer fun. He said, I play so poorly anymore, and it's just not fun. His last golf shot that he hit was the ceremonial drive at the Masters. I don't know, man. I I was like, ah, don't tell me that because I, I still think of Jack on eighty six going, yes, sir. You know? I know, I know. It's so funny when when Jack came into St. Louis a couple of years ago and I saw him and I said, Jack, you know how you doing? He's like, Jay, you still playing? And I said, eh, I play here and there, but I, I'm not on tour anymore. And he's like, your body holding up? And I'm like, nah, you know, isn't that? <laughs> and he said, yeah. He said, this old age is hard. He goes, you know, my entire career. I had everybody say to me, damn, Jack, I wish I could play like you. Damn, I wish I could play like you. now you you can. Well, now you can. And he (laughs) said, you know, Jack, is is it bad? He goes, Jay, it's so bad. He goes, I can hear my drives land. You know, and I was like, oh. But he had such a good attitude about it. And then Tom Watson was not quite as chipper about it. No, he wasn't. He gave these little little gruff on his end. And, And I get it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's. You, you you look at that and you you try to keep a cheery attitude and everything, but D, I mean Jack told me he goes I, I had a friend goat me into playing pickleball. You know I'm at the time I think he was eighty one or eighty two years old. He first shot he stumbles catches a toe falls they got to take him to the ER right hip right elbow right shoulder yeah he fell right and he's like I'm like you. What are you doing? He's saying to himself, pickleball. "What am I doing playing pickleball? I'm 82 years old, or whatever he was." And I said, 
he goes, yeah, I, you know, I knew I could, you know, Jack's still a competitor deep down. And he's like, yeah, I knew I could kick his ass. I just had to get out there and give him a try. I'm thinking you're 82. Do you remember so the good. first time you played with him? Yeah. What was that like, man? Oh, I was just nervous. I mean, I felt like my ankles were shaking. You know, every part of my body was. And you're also tingling with excitement. And you're just like, man, it, it, this is just so cool. Everything he did just looked right. So at what point do you sit there and say, okay, I'm a peer. I, I can play as well as Jack Nicholas. If not, I wouldn't be standing next to him ready to tee off. But on the other side, you're like, yeah. That's Jack Nicholas over there. 116 wins. You know, <laughs> right. you, you know, it's it's crazy. It's that's again where you know going back to the question that we talked about in terms of your mind and how do you it's you, your mind can just race on you and play tricks on you and hell it can throw you under the bus. I mean, you throw we sell ourselves throw ourselves under the bus all the time. You know, it's it's just not easy. You gotta you gotta hang in there and you gotta really be diligent about where you decide to give energy to. I mean, you know, Jack's not thinking about me. He's not. I mean, he's not thinking I'm bad things about me either he's playing his own game was he the kind of guy though that you could talk to after the the round was through or even because I, I watch you at the ascension and you're talking to everybody you're talking yep. to the people behind the ropes inside yep. the ropes you're talking to the, I was your talking playing to partners. you that time I chipped in and I saw you go to your back pocket I'm we like can't talk about you don't that. have to do that right now <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite part of the so tournament. So good. If for people that don't know, Jay and I, if we play golf, we have a few little games inside Some the game. Some wagers here and there. And if you chip in, you get a few extra bucks. So Jay chips in at the Ascension, and instead of being excited about and going to grab his his ball out of the cup, he's looking for me, and I'm grabbing my wallet. God, it was so good. Everybody's <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't worry about it. Somebody give me my ball. It was so good. So would you yeah. talk to Jack at all? I mean, would, was that something you'd be able to do afterwards? Well, I mean, we... I think we had lunch together and, and, but it wasn't, you know, kind of surface level stuff. Yeah. Because he's not, he's competing. So he's not going to be paying attention to my game. I'd love to ask him like, Jack, I'm, you know, that shot I hit on, but you know, for the most part, if you break it down, it all comes down to, did you commit to the shot and did you trust what you were doing? And if I do that, I'll live with the results no matter what. It's when you get down there and you're, you're either fearful or you're unsure. And they're basically all on the same side of the fence. That 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 side of the fence is no good. It doesn't lead to any sort of good golf shots and good good results. And so you just gotta kinda suck it up and quit doing it. As Chris Carpenter said when he was on the show and he learned about how to pitch, you gotta get rid of the junk, Jay. Get rid of the trash. And it's all in the way you think. And Tiger and Jack were the strongest mentally, Danny, of any of the players I've ever met. I could imagine. Mike Weir, by the way, named captain of the uh, President's Cup. I like that pick. I do, too. I like that pick. You know Mike fairly well, don't you? I do. He's a great guy. And, um, you know, he's a left-hander and a Canadian. And God love the Canadian folks. They're the greatest people from the Federcos of the world to the Turnbulls of the world to the Tim Peels of the world. Salt of the earth people. And do they love they're golf. And don't, I mean, I'm leaving people out. Brad Hall, Chris Pronger, Al McGinnis, all these great, great St. Louisans now. Doug Armstrong. Doug Ar- Another Dar- one of the Army. Loves just, he just loves, loves the game. And so, you, you know, you, you sit there and Weirsy represents the country and wins the Masters. Danny, that entire country celebrated, probably for weeks. What has more pressure, Ryder Cup, President's Cup? Oh, I'd say the Ryder Cup. Yeah, Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup because of the history. The President Cup is a baby in terms of how many years they played. It. I understand that. Yeah. But I mean, from his perspective, if you're the captain of that team, yeah. the President's Cup, man, you're feeling a lot of pressure, especially if you're named the captain, you're the guy out of North America that they select. There's a lot of pressure with that. Oh, yeah. Danny, you got to remember, he's he's on the international side, so he's is, yeah. running the internationals. And, so, and the other thing is, they're getting their ass handed to them every year. Yeah. They have they've won this thing one time in probably ten years. It's just one of those things. So, yeah, I mean, it's also you know probably not expected to win. And if he could pull one off, man, he'd go down in the, in the big time annals of uh, of golf lore. Where like, what'd you do? What'd you, what what you know? What'd you do differently? But the Ryder Cup. You know, Weirsy would give his left arm to play in that. Obviously, he is not even eligible because it's just you know Europe uh, uh, against in the United the States. US. Yeah. Um, at what point do you think we as 
a community here in St. Louis really start to dial in. The BMW is coming to yep. Belle Reve. 2026. And then 2030, yep. you've got the President's Cup. At what point do you think it's at, right after the BMW you say, all right, the golf world here in St. Louis, all eyes are focused on what's going to happen in 2030 with the President's Cup? Yeah, probably. You know, it's hard because there's so many so many years. There's four years in between. A lot of things can happen you in, know what, though, in, is funny? in the world of golf. I thought that, too, prior to Bell Reeve getting the last PGA Championship, and then I looked up and I was and like, here we are. Here we are. Yep, I know. It, Same. It, it happens fast, and – I'm sure Bell Reeve will make some adjustments from the BMW, and and it's a different style. It's yep. going to be different. There's yep. going to be a lot of international folks that are paying attention. The course will change a little bit, maybe. And so there's just a lot of things to look forward to with the President's Cup being uh, in St. Louis in 2030. I, I just think it's going to be remarkable. An international event? I know. It's September, so cool. I mean, we had the Ryder Cup at, at uh, O-Dub at Old Warson in 1971, I think, Danny. And that's uh, we've we've also had... The Curtis Cup, which is the women's version of the Walker Cup for the amateurs, we've had that at um, St. Louis Country Club not too long ago. But in terms of a pro international golf event, I mean, it's it's everything. What at what point do we have to start changing courses? I mean, think I'm dead serious when I say this. In seven years, imagine some of the young guys that are bombing it right now and what they're doing in a limited time of seven years. It's not that far away where these guys are bombing it so much where these courses, you can't buy more land. Right. And you're landlocked in right. a, most, probably 99 out of 100 of these places. Either got to do something with the equipment or the course, the course has got to change. Or the ball. Or yeah. the ball. So, That's well, another the one. the part of the equipment. So you're, you're absolutely right. And, Danny, here's the other thing. How much do you want to change these great venues? I, I mean, don't. they're historical, man. We're talking about U.S. Opens were played there. You always want to have that thing to say, oh, well, Gary Player won the 65 Open at Bell Reef and, and Brooks Kepka won the 2018 PGA Championship at Bell Reef. And then they changed the course. You're like, Oh, I mean, the courses evolve. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, if we don't do something with the power, the guys will – it wouldn't surprise me in 2030 if somebody's hitting at 400 yards long. And, Danny, that means point. driving par fours. That's my point. Yep. With some of the holes at Bell Reeve, they will be drivable yep. for these guys, which yep. to me is just insanity. It is insanity. when you. I mean, when we were playing Bell Reeve last week, we were on hole number five, and we looked back – to the, yeah. And we had a like a full nine iron to that back. Tee. I know it. We were like a hundred and fifty yards front of the tee, and the, it, it's 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 amazing to think you bring the best players in the world, and they're going to get up on that hole and hit a driver and a you know a some sort of flippy little short iron, maybe not a wedge, but probably a nine or an eight iron. What did you think of John Rahm? Uh, he chose to quit the TGL, so he was going to be in that Tiger Rory League, yep. uh, new golf league set yep. up by those two. I guess, first of all, don't read into that is no. him jumping to live, which is what a lot of people did. But yeah. what do you think of him not being a part of it? He's definitely not jumping to live, but I think he's got two little boys and he's got he's making a hell of a lot of money. And he said yes, because this is going to be really cool. And then he's like, oh, hell. That means I got to go commitment. to... Yeah, and Danny, they're doing them all at Tiger's this studio, this little stadium thing that they're creating down in West Palm Beach, and John lives in Phoenix. Exactly. I yep. mean, that's, you know, the, the three time zones, that just takes your toll when you're playing, and God only knows what other sort of commitments John has. So when you're doing all this stuff, bro, and, it, you know, this is going to be great, and I'm sure they are going to pay him several millions of dollars, but it's not. it doesn't mean anything to him. He wants his good play on the PGA Tour and in majors and and, and knocking off records, and then he wants to spend time with his family. He, 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 he truly does. And he's still going to do some other things, but you can't do everything. The one thing I love that I was listening to a podcast, I think it was this last week, about the Tiger League, the Rory League, whatever you want to call it, TGL. Yeah. There's going to be a shot clock I love it on on this this with their events. You're so, damn right. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Hit yeah, the ball. That's, that's what my dad would say. Two things are going to happen. You're going to hit that putt. It's either going to go in or you get the putt again. Let's go. You and I 
are playing a lot of golf, yep. and I always say to you, you know what? We got to, like, for instance, this last week, we had a foursome, and we got through in three hours and 15 minutes, I think it was, something yep. like that. Foursome, folks. A foursome. Yep. And so we play fast. Yes. I may hit it left, right, all over the place, but I'm going to, by God, I'm playing fast. Yeah. You hit it down the middle, and then you put it on the green, and then you putt, and then it's a birdie, and then we go. <laughs> so that's fine. Whatever. We play two different styles, but we're going to play fast. I said to you, I said, Jay, how did you deal with it on – the PGA Tour having to wait around and sit and sit and sit. Brutal. Okay, guy, you hit your drive. Now you got to wait five minutes. Now you hit your next shot. Saw it at the Ascension. I can only imagine what it was like when you were playing on the PGA Tour, but it is long, and you don't realize that when you're watching on television because they cut shot to shot to shot to shot. Right. Some of it's on a little bit of a tape delay. Right. So they can tell Jim Nance, "Hey, Rory on five moments ago." Exactly. Yep. This is, and so as a viewer. You're just seeing shot after shot after shot. As a player, that's not necessarily how it, it goes. So, number one, I'm glad there's going to be a shot clock, so to speak, in this. But number two, I wish that they would speed up play on the PGA Tour. And I, I would imagine 90% of the players wish that was the case, too. No question. Danny, I was on tour playing when we, on the weekends, we went to twosomes. Okay? So, after Daylight Savings Time kicks back in in the spring... We play twosomes on the weekend, and we would. Pl- there were guys that I played with a couple of guys. We played in under three hours. Amazing. We just did it, and now this thing is drawn out and drawn out, and they're playing two balls in four hours, you know, thirty five minutes. It is insane, and something. Listen, you just got to try to figure it out. You, do, I, there's no, there are certain shots where you need extra time. Okay, you just do. There's, there's a ruling. There's this, that, the other thing. The conditions are confusing. You're, but for the most part, let's go. How much time to find your ball? Three minutes. Three minutes, man. That goes fast. <laughs> I would imagine that goes, <laughs> that goes really goes fast. fast. And you got that pit in your stomach. You're like, oh damn, a lost ball. Because if you find it, you just saved yourself a shot. Exactly. And distance. So it's basically two shots. Is there a time limit on? A ruling. So you got to find the rules official. He's got to get in the card. He's no. got he's to find you. So there is no timing on that. Because a lot of times when you go to various golf courses, D, you'll have remote areas. Okay. And this, the officials are stationed along different spots. So, for example, and this has happened before, this one official handles holes one through six. Okay. And the six hole happens to be the farthest point away from the clubhouse. He's at, a rule, at another ruling, and you have a ruling it within his area. It happens all the time. You've got to pull another official from a different part of the golf course and go find him. And oftentimes it'll take him 10 minutes to get there. You sit. You just you, sit. You, there's nothing you could do. The players get pissed. Oh, man. It's not certain guys. There's just nothing you can do, though. There's nothing you can do. So I don't think they waste a whole lot of that energy. But I got to tell you, I was leading the Phoenix Open on Sunday. I don't know if it was 95 or something, back in the 90s. I had a one-shot lead starting Sunday's round, and I'm playing with Mark Calcavecchia and Jim Thorpe, okay? And um, I'm one under par after six holes, and I've still got a one-shot lead, and Calc is teetering on – he's like two over par for the day or something, and and Thorpe, he's just kind of hitting it around. And and so we walk from the sixth green at the TPC Scottsdale over to the seventh tee, and there's six groups on the tee. That's ridiculous. A ball got stuck up in a cactus. They couldn't find it. Once they find it, they have to call for ruling. The thing just got backed up. Danny, I sat on that tee for one hour without hitting my shot. What now, did you do to stay loose? Uh, what do you do? I, you just you just gotta you you just gotta sit for a while, and then you gotta once you understand when the time frame is gonna happen, you gotta start gearing your mind back up. You gotta let your mind go off and drift off to Tahiti, wherever you know. <laughs> think about sports. Think about whatever. And then get fired back up. But, Danny, Cal birdied nine of the last 12 holes. So the stoppage and helped if, him out. Right. And if we could have kept going, Calc was running his car in the ditch. Calc is a great guy. We got to get him on the show. We could talk about that. But he's a great guy. When he was running hot, he'd run that. He'd run the tables like yeah. he did there. When he was running cold, he'd run the tables the other way. He shot 88 one year at, at, the, uh, at um, the Memorial Tournament. 88. The weather was terrible. I don't care. 88 hard. for a PGA Tour player. That's double snowman, but we have other words for that, but we'll leave those out. <laughs> but anyway, so and it's just one of those things that happened, but but the slow play was one of my, the things that I had to learn the most. And I'll tell you what, I've got a couple buddies that if they knew how much slow play irritated me, 
they tie their shoe on every shot. Is that right? Oh, hell yeah. And just do it on purpose, and they it's part of the game. Stay with it. Stay within the rules. They're not breaking any rules. But, like, Lanny Watkins plays fast, and if you kind of irritate him by playing slow, go ahead. Amazing. Yep. Hey, Amazing. This is what life, that's, that. there's all sorts of ways to try to figure out, you know, how to get an edge. That's hey, Jay Delsing. Not breaking any rules. Sorry. No, you're not no. breaking rules, yeah. but the yeah. gamesmanship of yeah, it. Yeah, it is. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. This is Golf with Jay Delsing on a Sunday morning here on 101 ESPN. We're coming to you from the Car Shield Studios. We're presented by Darty Business Solutions. You want tips for your game? You're going to get a bunch when we come back. I'd like to welcome I Promise to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. What is I Promise, you ask? It's a St. Louis-based company with the most clinically backed eye health performance supplement brand with over 20 years of eye health expertise and nutrition science. It's all natural, and their cutting-edge science and technology has helped I Promise forge many exciting new golf partnerships, like with the PGA of America, the Titleist Performance Institute, the Ledbetter Academy, and many more. Perhaps the most exciting component for me is that all of this new improvement is measurable. I can tell you that in my case, my initial score was around 0.25. And after taking the I Promise product for two plus months, my score soared to almost 0.60. It had more than doubled. I can now read the greens better because I'm not really dealing with as much glare and trying to manage that. And I squint much less when I'm playing golf. And you don't have to take it from me. Check out what Padraig Harrington has to say about this product. He is playing some of the best golf of his career in his early 50s. And he swears, I promise, has helped improve his short game. Check out I Promise. That's I Promise, the company helping us to see better, play better, and live better. Visit them at IPromise.com. For the best in Italian cuisine in St. Louis, look no further than Paul Mano's, located in Chesterfield. It's traditional Italian cooking, and their best ingredient, it's their tradition. It's cooking like Paul's grandmother used to make and like his mother still prepares today. There are no corners cut at Paul Mano's, from greeting you at the door to the pasta you'll share with your family. Paul Mano's is committed to bringing you their very best anytime you share a meal at their place. It's Paul Mano's located in Chesterfield. Okay, so you know Marcone is the largest distributor of GE parts in North America. Check. You know about their support for backstoppers, first responders, and our men and women in the military. Check that also. Well, here's their latest community venture. It's called Rees Across America. This year, Marcone will place 1,000 Christmas wreaths on the grave sites of our fallen military heroes in 10 different cemeteries around the country. From Dallas to Delaware, Western New York to Houston, New Jersey to right here at Jefferson Barracks. Each of these locations and more will have wreaths delivered and respectfully placed on a gravesite. Remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. That's the mission of the Wreaths Across America program. So join the Golf with Jay Delsing show and Marcone and sponsor a wreath, volunteer, or partner with us to support our military. Saturday, December 16th is National Wreaths Across America Day. So get involved. That's Marcone and Wreaths Across America. Hey, St. Louis, Eddie McVeigh here from Maggie O'Brien's. When you head downtown for a concert or cards or blues game, and now for the St. Louis City soccer game, please come see us at Maggie O'Brien's before and after your event. Take our shuttle to and from or stay in-house and watch your favorite team on our multiple high-def TVs. We look forward to seeing you soon at one of our two locations in Sunset Hills on South Lindbergh or downtown at the corner of Market and 20th Street. Union Station is next to us. Do you remember the golden rule? I'm sure you do, but just in case, it goes like this. Treat people the way that you'd like to be treated. At People's National Bank, that one statement is the cornerstone of what this bank is all about. Locally owned, with 23 locations in Southern Illinois and the metropolitan St. Louis area, People's National Bank parlays a robust menu of commercial or personal banking services you could possibly need with a friendly yet hardworking Midwestern attitude. Maybe you just want to do business with a bank whose entire team lives in the same neighborhoods as we do. If you're like me, 
and doing business with someone you trust is important to you, then People's National Bank is the bank for you. Jason Rantham, local president, is here for you to call and he'll answer any questions you may have. His personal cell is 314-974-2243. You can also find us online at peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank is here for all of your banking needs. WXOS, WXOS HD1 East St. Louis, 101 ESPN is driven by Auto Centers Nissan, home of the lifetime warranty and 30-day return. Coming to you from the Car Shield Studios, we're presented by Darty Business Solutions. We thought it would be fun to give everyone a little lesson today. Well, you you've seen it when we've been together, whether it's in a golf course, whether it's in a you know at the uh, restaurant where we're grabbing a, a bite to eat. People are always asking us questions, always asking, "How can I hit it for farther? How can I?" My, Putting sucks, you know? Yeah. So what the heck? Let's dive into this stuff. Let, let's start with putting. Yeah. Uh, how do people get better with putting? Well, first of all, you've 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 got to be as relaxed throughout the throughout the bag, we are gonna try to relax everything as much as we possibly can. Hands, wrists, arms, everything. Think about Michael, what it looked like when Michael Jordan was shooting a free throw. Danny, he had his routine. He was taking deep breaths. His arms were just hanging. He's spinning the ball, and he's it's all flowy. We want your golf game to resemble that, flowy. You, you know, Nothing stiff, nothing uber mechanical. I've heard you say routine with putting. Use yeah. the same routine every single time. Long putt, short putt, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And what that is, it's a pre-shot routine where – you have this thing that you've designed for yourself. And some guys will take, you know, maybe 15 to, to 30 seconds to do it. Other guys will take less than 15. I take less than 15. I I do all of this prep. I look around the hole. You know, I look at the putt from a lot of different angles, uphill, downhill, all that stuff. You know, how much is it going to break? What are, What's my read and everything? But then once I'm ready to putt, Danny, it's that's it. I'm going, I'm going left edge or I'm going right edge and I do, I, I stand in there and it all takes the same amount of time. I stand in there. I take a look up at the hole. I make one practice swing. I I look back at the hole. Then I put the putter behind the ball, look at the hole one more time and I'm I'm gone. And you know, two things are going to happen. It's going to go in. Or it stays out. Or you get to try it again. <laughs> you know, that's the way it works. That's what my dad used to say. He's like, there's two things. That you're going to make it or you're going to miss it. Let's go. And you don't stand over the ball. I, I've no. watched you putt a thousand times. You, you know, you're, you're a guy that has a quick, in my opinion, a quick pre-shot routine. Yep. And you don't stand over the ball and think about it all that much. You're, you're there and ready to go. Right. And, and I'm not necessarily saying you have to be that quick, but what I want you to be is decisive and committed. If it's, I don't care if you know the greens or not, you need to, one of the things that people, that this guy say to me is that I just don't know these greens like I do at home. Well, no kidding. You play our home golf course, Danny. When we go play our home golf courses, we barely even look at the putts because Absolutely. we already know what they're doing, both of us. But what what what's key about having a golf game that travels is to try to read a putt and then commit to it. Even if you're unsure, you've got to commit to something because the worst part throughout all of these tips is we don't want to make an uncommitted anything. I don't want you swiping at the ball, not having a commitment from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet to whatever it is you want to do. I, you're going to take this putt. It's downhill. It's going to break right to left. I want you I want you focused in on that, and, and that's it. And Danny, here's the other thing. Putt to make every putt. So don't lag. No, no. There's no, there's no lagging. I don't, I want you to try to make every single putt and then not worry about the next putt until you have it. The problem that I see all the time, D, with amateurs is they get so afraid to three putt and they try to lag this putt down that the ball doesn't come anywhere close. It never goes in. And it never comes very close to going in and they wind up three putting. 
I want you to putt to make instead of putting to not miss. Think about that. That that's a big difference. It's a yeah. huge distinction when you're standing up there. I told you we stand on the we stand on the greens at the ascension when you were caddying for me and stuff. I got a fifty footer. I'm trying to make it. Yeah. And and the and the other thing that we've learned from Olympic athletes and from data and stuff is that is that the the more the the smaller the target did you have the smaller the dispersion meaning you take a look at you're trying to I'm picking a spot on the inside of the hole and I'm going and and. The, the as opposed to trying to just get it somewhere around the hole. I mean, could you imagine if you pick a little uh, a speck of something out in the hole compared to a six-foot circle? If you miss a, miss a six-foot circle, you might have a 10 or 12-footer. And, and if you just barely miss this speck, you, you might lip out. You might have a two-footer. You're, you're going to make more putts, and you're going to three-putt less, period. That's for sure. What about finding a target on your way to make that putt. Yeah. So that's something I've heard you talk about a lot. Yeah, a lot of guys will look at that and go, man, if I can run this right over this old cup or right over this old pitch mark, you know, and see, that's where you start engaging your brain into the positive side of sport. You know from all the sports you played, shortstop at a high level, baseball at a high level, you need to, you, you start thinking too much and that ball just Find you and eat you alive. Okay, chipping the ball. Yeah. What are the best drills for chipping? Okay, so chipping. We're gonna dis, we're gonna distinguish chipping. Danny is gonna be from let's say five steps off the green, so fifteen feet or so. Okay, so chipping and pitching are going to be kind of interchangeable, but we're gonna say pitching chipping in general is gonna be a low shot that's gonna get on the ground and run. Okay, so what we need to do is, fi- first of all, figure you need to be able to figure out your lie. You have to read your lie. If you're in a, in a tight fairway or in the fairway, you have nothing to worry about. You can hit any sort of shot you want. But if you're in grass and you have grass, that's a, uh, your ball sitting down or the grass is going to affect your ball, then there are things that you have to do, especially if you've got the back of your ball covered with grass, Danny, because basically that means when you come down with the back of whatever club you decide, you're going to hit grass and not ball, right? How bad does that feel? Oh, when yeah, you, it's the worst. When you think you're going to hit ball, folks, and you hit grass, the ball goes nowhere. It's dead. It usually goes half or a third the distance you want it to, and it never works out well. So if, first of all, let's just say you're in grass and you have a nice lie. And let's just say you've got a tight pin. So we're going to hit this little chip, Danny. We're five feet off the green. We're in the rough, but we've got a very nice lie to a pin that's only five steps on or 15 more feet on. So basically we have a 20-foot chip. Right, so we got five feet of green, uh, five feet of rough, and then fifteen feet of green. What we're going to do on this uh, instance, and this is crucial, folks, to hitting soft chips. We're going to let the club raise up in the backswing a little bit. We're going to take uh, either our most lofted wedge or our second most lofted wedge. Some folks only use a fifty-six. I have a fifty-eight and a fifty-four. I use my fifty-eight. I'm going to come up off the ball just a little bit, and then I'm going to drop the head of the club right on the back of the ball. I'm going to use the bounce, which is the very bottom of the club, to hit the ground, and that bounce does exactly what it says. It bounces through and through the grass and off the ground, and then I'm going to keep the face of that wedge, Danny, pointed up. It's not going to turn over like in my normal swing when I when my hands roll over. The face is going to be pointed up, and you're going to you're going to enjoy this shot so much, folks, because the ball's going to go up and land soft as opposed to low and runny. And I see this all the time. If you get stuck in rough and you don't take this little angle and get a little up and down on it, the ball flies across the green and you're pissed and you're going to three putt and you got a double bogey. That's we're, what you have. We're coming to you from the Car Shield Studios presented by Doherty Business Solutions. How about drills with chipping? What do you, what do you like to do? I, I like to, to, to vary my clubs and vary my lies and then I like to pick a spot out and 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 uh, and then choose a height, Danny. So so let's say we're five feet off the green. This ball is going to get somewhere between 
we're going to be able to keep it somewhere between the middle of your calf height and your waist height. That's all. That's we're not going to hit any chips higher than that. Anything that gets higher than waist height, we'll call a pitch. Okay. And so what I try to do is pick out a spot and land the ball with that height. Now, Danny, if I'm going to hit something that stays below my knee height, that ball's going to have a lot of run on it, isn't it? So I'm only going to use that shot when I've got the flagstick, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet on the other side of the green. And when it's close, I'm going to get that thing up in the air and I'm going to try to hit. So folks, it's pick a height and pick a spot to land the ball in and match those up, and you'll be shocked at how well you'll start uh, chipping the ball. How about driving the ball off the tee? People always want to drive the ball better off the tee. What's, what's some advice on on doing that? Danny, understanding the – this is so much fun. I'm geeking out on this. I hope people – I'm not putting people to sleep here. But I love it. Danny, it's, so the driver is a totally different animal. First of all, longest shaft in the bag. So it's gonna, going to be the heaviest club in the bag, and it's also going to be the one with the straightest face on it outside of your putter. And that means your miss hits, Danny, will have bigger dispersions, right? So the more loft is your friend, you don't curve the ball as much with loft. You get your, you know, you hit a, a 240-yard drive, you can hit 30 yards of draw on that or 30 yards of cut on that. You get a sand wedge, and you can draw it, you know, feel like you hit a big hook, and it goes five yards left. Sure. You know what I mean? So so that's that's one of the things. So there's got to be rhythm and power and speed that goes with the driver. Second of all, the driver is the only club we hit that's not on the ground. It cannot, I repeat, it cannot be hit down upon. It needs to be swept up off the tee. Folks, anybody that wants to see this done in a beautiful way, Rory, McElroy oh. YouTube. Danny, I've I don't know how many times I've shown you that one. There is the greatest slow motion version of Rory smashing this driver and the ball looks like it's I mean it looks like it's going straight up in the air and it goes 350 yards. So the ball is up in your stance, usually towards towards your lead foot's instep. So if you're a right-handed golfer, that'll be your left foot and then folks Be mindful of keeping your trail shoulder. So I'm a right-handed golfer, so I'm teeing the ball up on my left uh, heel or instep area. My right shoulder needs to stay lower than my left, and that will help you stay shallow, D. Some of the times when we get our driver screwed up, it's because we're not hitting up on it enough. We're hitting down on it a little bit, and our shoulders stay too level at address. Now, we always want our, and we'll talk about this when we hit irons, we always want our trail shoulder to be a little lower. But with our driver, you can exaggerate that a little bit because you're dealing with somewhere between one and a half and three inches of height with your tee. So Danny, it's just imperative if you want these new high performance drivers to truly perform, the ball's got to be swept off that tee. And you watch Rory, all these words I'm saying, watch Rory. It's just, it's almost like magic. How about iron shots? You mentioned that best way to get going on those. Okay. So in the iron shot, so this is, this is, um, this is kind of the opposite. So if we want to be shallow with our driver, we want to be a little steeper with our irons. And that means usually taking some sort of divot and we clip the ball first, Danny, then a little divot and the club moves through. So we're going to start with a six iron, generally speaking, middle of your stance. Okay. So let's say we're right-handed golfers. One thing all good iron players do is they have they're a little bit of forward shaft lean, meaning at setup D, their hands are in front of the ball. Okay. Are they five inches in front of the ball? No, but they're, they're an inch and a half in front of the ball. And that's crucial. That'll help you with a downward motion. That'll help you keep your hands forward. And that'll help you hit crisp iron shots. And you can use the ground to almost help you square up your club because it's coming down, so it's a little steeper, as we mentioned, and it, it, you, you're you able to almost trap the ball with your iron and your uh, um, uh, and the ground. You hit an iron shot the other day when we were playing. We were in the seventh hole, and you hit a rocket. And I looked at you, I was like, wow. And that ball took off high and true as can be. And you actually hit it over the green. Remember, yeah. you hit it about 
you know, two feet over the green, but it was a rocket. And when you do it right, there's a distinct sound that these balls and, and these clubs have. And you're like, wow, that ball was hit. That ball had compression and that ball is done and hit the way you want it to be hit. Let's talk about bunker shots. How about bunker shots around the green? This is my favorite part. So the bunker shot be around the green. You can also use this, folks, out of the high rough when you have a bad lie and you're pitching the ball. So if you're in four or five inch rough, you're going to want to hit bunker shots too because there's too much grass in the way. You're not going to get enough club on the ball. So we're in a bunker. Again, I'll be a right-handed golfer. We're going to put the ball slightly forward in our stance, slightly front of center. And just for practice sake, we're going to put the ball down. And I want you to draw a line that will go perpendicular between your feet, folks, two inches behind the ball. Then I want you to take the ball and get rid of the ball for a minute because this is the drill part. I want you to lift the club up going on your backswing a little bit and then drop it right onto that line with the bounce of the club, keeping the face pointed towards the sky, and then finish your swing around to the left. Again, I'm a right-handed golfer. So the the club is going to go up, down, splash into the sand with the bounce of the club, cut through the sand, and turn to your left side to complete the shot. And Folks, to be a good bunker player, you need to know how much sand I'm going to be taking with every single stroke. And if you don't know where the sand's going to enter, your club's going to enter the sand, You one day you'll hit six inches behind the ball, the next day you'll skull it and hit it right in the forehead, Danny. We talk about this all the time. This is crucial to playing good bunker shots. So once you can feel like you can start hitting that line with your sand, with the bounce of your sandwich every time, Put the ball in there. Put it two inches in front of the line. Don't change one damn thing. Hit that and and then hit that that drop that that the head of that wedge and the bounce of that wedge right on the line and keep her going, folks. The other thing is in the bunkers you don't want you don't need your legs, so they move very little only on the through part of your swing, and you want your hands in a very neutral position, meaning. Do not get a lot of forward shaft lean. So if the ball's in the middle of my stance, get the, your hands right on that ball, not ahead of the ball and not behind the ball. Fairway bunkers. Best Fairway way to do it. Fairway on, man. bunkers, man. you got to keep your legs. You've So watch when a tour player hits it in a fairway bunker, D. The first thing he does is he gets he gets in there with his feet and he digs. So he is, he is providing a super, super solid base for his legs because as soon as you move a little too much with the lower body and you're not secure, you hit fat. Hit it fat Always, yeah. every Danny. Ninety nine out of a hundred times you'll hit it fat. So get your legs and and your feet secure in the sand. And I actually will try to move my lower body incrementally less than I would um, uh, otherwise. Okay, when I'm standing on the solid ground, just as a reminder to me that I'm in that fairway bunker. And then the next thing that I do, guys, is I just try to hit a golf shot. I'm not trying to think. Obviously, when the ball is sitting in the grass in the fairway, I don't hit it fat. Yeah. The only reason I hit it fat in the sand is when my feet move. And so I get myself in the bunker. Here's another good rule of thumb, D. In general, folks, when you're hitting your iron shots, club up. Take one more club. And when you're in the fairway bunkers, by all means, always take one more club. So if you're sitting in the grass and you normally hit an eight iron, now you're in the fairway bunker, take a seven. It takes so much pressure off you. We're talking tips with Jay Delsing coming to you from the Car Shield Studios, as always brought to you by Darty Business Solutions. All right, a lot of people struggle getting out of the rough. Yep. What's the best way to get out of the rough? Well, so, Danny, there's <laughs> you so took many. A deep breath, I, know. Like, I, I feel bad for people because how many times did we see people at the Ascension Charity Classic Pro Am hit the ball in the rough and they go over there with their three wood and they take them three to get out of the rough? Oh, yeah. And, and they look at me, and you, you, you can't go in there with your three wood, folks. You got to go in there with some loft. And then you've got to create some angle on your backswing to help you to help you avoid some of that grass that's, you know, going to slow your club down behind the ball. You hit a shot 
man, it was about two weeks ago, you hit a shot and you trapped that ball out of the rough and you hit a six iron and it had to go 225 yards. I don't know if you remember that or not, but it came out high. I remember it the bad out, ones. It I don't remember out, the good ones. It came out like a rocket. And I was like, wow, that's, that's the way you do it. So folks, if a lot of times you're going to have to take some medicine when take your medicine when you're in the rough. And if you're 200 yards away and you could typically reach that, you know, with a five wood, but this ball sitting down the grass, that five wood's not going to work. You're going to have to get a seven iron, an eight iron, maybe a six iron, get a little angle on your backswing. So that means lift it up a little bit, trap right down on top of it and be firm. Again, I'm a right-handed golfer. Be firm with, for me, it's my left hand with your lead hand and arm and stay strong in there because Danny, as that club comes into the grass, the the hosel will catch on the grass and the toe will roll over the heel. And you've, you've, we even saw it at the Ascension Absolutely. tournament. Even it happens to the pros all the time. That grass, even as fast as you're trying to come into the ball, that toe rolls over and the ball goes left. I've heard you talk about course management yep. being so important in the game of golf. Yep, you got to understand your game, right? Danny, you've got to understand your game and what your strengths are. There, I would say people tell me this all the time. They go play their home golf course, and there's one or two holes, Danny, that they can't get out of without a, making a double or a triple bogey. Every they're like, yeah, I would have broken eighty had I not, you know, triple bogey number four and number seventeen or so. What what? F- figure out th- what that is, and then understand your game and what your tendencies are. So, folks, if you're a slicer and you're a perpetual slicer, and there is trouble on the right or trouble on the left, try to figure out a way to manage that. So let's say your three wood doesn't fade nearly as much as your driver. Take your damn three wood out and put the ball in play, meaning not in the water. It doesn't even necessarily have to be in the fairway, D. We cannot have one swing costing us more than one stroke, period. We can't not do that. we got to eliminate our three putts. Right, it's really kind of like the Tiger Five. We're going to eliminate three uh, three putts. We're going to eliminate making any bogeys with any wedges in our hands. We're we're going to get all the balls up and down that we should, and we're going to take advantage of the par fives. And take advantage of the par fives, depending on your handicap level, might mean a par. Sure, but that doesn't. So many times, Danny, I see people stand up on a par five. And they hit a nice drive. And there's a really tight area. Maybe there's water. But there's all sorts of trouble. But because it's a par five, they feel like they've got to take their three wood and push it way up there. No. No. Not if it's going to bring a bunch of trouble in and it's not going to get you on the green. Lay something back to a number that you like. Let's say you're really proficient from, a, from 130 yards. And I'm picking this randomly. So you're out there. 250 yards away, you can't hit your three wood that far, and up there is a pond at at 200 yards, but that three wood, if you hit it just right, it might get to that pond. Lay that thing back to 130, hit a 120-yard shot off of the tee, I mean, for your second shot, and now you're in one of your wheelhouse areas. You're much more likely to make par birdie that way. That's what we do on the PGA Tour, Danny. When we are laying up, we are laying up to try to hit our favorite, our perfect number for one or two of the clubs in our bag. Finally, in our tip segment, the mental side of golf, which is so hard. How it do you is com- so hard. Look at me. Combat- I'm a mental midget. Well, how do you – no, you're not. How do you <laughs> combat the negative things, and, and how did you approach the mental side of golf? Well, it's interesting because, Danny, in 1984, I got my PGA Tour card. Writer, and I kept my card my first two years. And right around my third year, I was like, it's getting to me, man. You know, missing too many cuts. I'm wondering about, am I going to be able to. The am grind of it, a, all of it. I got to have a job next year. The girl's going to have clothes. How are we going to do this whole thing? And I realized that, that uh, and it was because of Bernard Langer. Bernard Langer. Uh, was telling me that he started working with a sports psychologist. Well, come to find out, probably 99% of the guys out there work with sports psychs, but nobody talked about it back then. Nowadays, nobody cares. They're all part of their team with their yoga instructors and their pilots and everything else. So we got to see how I got that private I, plane. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you've got to think, you've got to keep it extremely simple, and you've got to f- stay focused on what it is you want, not what you don't want. Like, I'll see people go up there and go, it's just not going to go left. It's just not going to go left. And they'll literally hit the ball 150 yards right. 
which is just as bad as left. Sure. You know what I mean? So pick out that target, and you've got to figure out how to make a committed swing towards your target and forget about the results because the results are going to make us tight. Get into the processes of committing to your shot and committing to your target. This is crucial on putting too. Guys, you're standing over a five foot putt and maybe you got $20 on on the line with your buddies, $2, no dollars, but you just want to make it. Go through the processes of reading the putt, committing to your line, and then trusting your stroke, freeing it up. It's, you've got to free it up. The more you, tr- trust me, if controlling it would work for you, I tell you, I tried to control it and the ball, nah, you've done this at a high level. Does the ball ever go where you want to when you no. want to control it? No. Ever. It goes shorter and, cr- and more crooked. The thing though, as we wrap up our tip segment here, the thing that you have really impressed upon me is commit to the shot. No matter what. No matter what. Look at, the, you know, you get behind the ball, yep. whatever your pre-shot routine yep. is, you dress the ball, but commit to that shot. Yeah, Danny, we stand up on a par three and play a par three that's got water on it all the time. I don't care if you hit the ball in the water. I really don't. I don't want you to be afraid of hitting it in the water. Like, I'm going to, here's my line, here's my club, this is my shot. I'm committing to that free it up, what happens? I'll live with those results. I don't want you to stand up there and go, oh, I hit in the water here last yeah. time. There it goes. I mean, and those are tough, and that's real. How how about this, folks? You stand up on the first hole and you miss a, you, you miss a three-footer. How many more three-footers are you going to have today? A bunch. It happens. Danny, what do they say in baseball? Ball the ball will find fi- you. The ball will find you. You come in. Maybe there's a no-hitter on the line, and you throw me out in left field and you're pitching. Guess who's getting the first shot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The ball's Ball's coming to me. The ball finds you. And so that's how the game is. You miss that first three-footer, you're likely to have seven or eight more three-footers. You have got to be able to get into the processes of having your full body commitment and then trusting your stroke and not worrying about the results because not there's not been one guy in the history of golf that's made every one of his three footers tiger woods that's jay delsing i'm dan mclaughlin you can email jay if you have a question about tips or something in the world of golf jay at jdelsinggolf.com that's jay at jdelsinggolf.com that's jay i'm dan this is coming to you from the car shield studios presented by darty business solutions Powers Insurance and Risk Management is a family-owned local business that's been helping our community for over 200 years. In the always confusing world of insurance, Powers Insurance provides clarity, exceptional service, and the latest in cutting-edge products to deliver the highest quality in property and casualty coverage, as well as strategic planning consultation services. Powers Insurance and Risk Management will partner with you That's right, partner with you to customize the right coverage for you and your family. Tim Davis, the Chief Operations Officer, will personally sit down and talk you through the ins and outs of your policies. They are experts at helping you control your workplace expenses and helping to guarantee the safety of you and your employees and their needs. You can visit them at powersinsurance.com. That's powersinsurance.com for all of your insurance needs. Hi, this is Adam Betts from Family Golf and Learning Center. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delson. Redbird Heating and Cooling sponsors the Veterans Vocational Apprenticeship Program. Jed, the CEO and former Marine, will teach, mentor, and sign off on educational and mechanical work hours to help you get fully licensed while you work and get paid by the company. What a great way to launch your career as a fully licensed HVAC specialist. Visit RedbirdHVAC.com. That's Redbird Heating and Cooling. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsey. To connect with Jay, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. 
You'll see the latest in equipment, find the latest innovations in golf, and get tips from a PGA professional. That's jdelsinggolf.com. Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. A lot of tips from my man over there, Jay Delsing, as we welcome you back to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Fun segment as we rip through some of the various tips that you might have asking a question of Jay Delsing. We tried to cover a bunch of that right there, didn't we? Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun, Danny. And, and trying to keep, you know, it's still kind of a 30,000-foot view, but it also there's plenty in there that if you love the game, one of those little tips can, can help a lot. I want to give a, a shout-out to a friend of yours. This past week, we got a we got a new addition to the Golf with Jay Delsing family. Yeah, we do. We got so Derek and Sheila, my friends that uh, own Barn Again down in the Valley. These are great people. Coach Kirby, Jay Todd, the whole crew. Man, they st- they'll stand down there. They'll tear an old barn down, Danny. They got all these cool doors and all this wood. They'll drink beer and and they'll listen to the show. And we got a new golfer. In the community, his no, it's name a new is, fan of golf with Jay Delsing. That's, that's what it is. That's what it is. His name is Henry Surges, and welcome to the fan club, Henry, Love it. and welcome to the golf community. And and uh, your grandma and grandpa, Derek and Sheila, are so excited. They're 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 over the moon. They're uh, they're already. I guarantee you, Sheila's buying all sorts of stuff. You know, this poor baby's probably a, a month old and probably got golf clubs from uh, from Derek. And <laughs> Sheila's got all sorts of clothes. It's just great. But congratulations, guys, and uh, and uh, we can't wait to start hearing how he's uh, how he's playing, what his handicap is, and. Um, what you know? What what's his favorite flavor? No, we better not go there. Well, hey, Henry, <laughs> if you have a golf question, it's J at jdelsinggolf dot com. Just that's, go on, that's go right. on your computer He's... when you get old enough and email J. <laughs> and hopefully, we, hey, hopefully, I'm still alive by then. We Henry. will be answering some of those emails coming up in our final segment. Want to hit you with this? The golf simulator industry is now estimated to be worth one point five billion. Eight years from now, it's forecasted to be worth over $3 billion. So, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yes, it's growing quickly. It's actually growing twice as fast as the golf equipment market. That is what's happening right now with the simulators around the game of golf. Amazing. Isn't it cool, Danny? And so who the hell would have thought with a worldwide pandemic, our, we're going to see the game that we love just go crazy. And we, all the clubs in town and around the country are full. It's just, it, it, it's really awesome. And when you start thinking about the simulators, because of this interest, you're going to see so much advancement in that area, you know, because with this high tech, they're, they're, they're making they're, and improving them all the time. It, it's amazing when you can go out there and you're like, hey, what course you want to play? Hey, let's go play Pebble Beach. Well, I play Pebble Beach a lot. And you go up there and go, wow, this is pretty damn cool. How, how close is it to it? I, I mean, I've never played. Yeah pebble never played the masters never played these places um so it's hard for me to judge all i know is that the technology is awesome i love love being on the simulator and just having fun with it right and here's the thing with so many more people being involved in the game loving the game they're looking for more ways to do it guys are tricking out their basements d with all these beautiful you know all this new golf equipment they're gonna they're putting track men down there they're Big screens and and, and and beautifully done, and, and it's happening all over the place. You're also getting a lot of different uh, community establishments. You know, the Wildwood Pub has got three or four simulators out there, um, and, and they're they're popping up all over the place. You know, our good buddy Bummer and his buddy Ray Fernell, they were looking at that place out at Chesterfield, and they've got simulators, and we know the Legrands have simulators at Pro-Am Golf. We know Adam Betts is 
rocking simulator leagues, and he's got his club fitting thing, and 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 so, I mean, this thing is it's 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 going. Well, the thing I love is that you can be in St. Louis in December, or January, and people want to continue to play golf year round. Yep. And you mentioned the leagues. And then you have the holiday parties right around the corner. You got all those different things that you can just make specific to golf and do it indoors. Now, is it the same of being on number seven at Pebble Beach, number nine at Pebble Beach, 18? No, it's not the same. But can you have a lot of fun with it? Yeah, and it's still a golf club in your hand. Yeah, Danny, and you get to drink a beer and you're out with your you know, with your buddies, you're talking smack. You still have games on there. The the putting is the part where the simulators lag the most because it's you know, it's 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 hard, but it's getting better and better all the time. All right. I want to hit you with this because I'm not sure this is a good thing or not. I know it's been talked about a lot at Augusta, the Masters, the yeah. 18th and the 9th. A lot of people think that they should flip-flop it to get more drama. I don't know how much drama you need in the at Augusta going into 18 anyway. You mean flip the ninth hole with the 18th hole, not the back and front nines? Or do they want to flip the, the entire nines? No, 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 not the entire, just, just, just the holes. Just 9 and 18. I'm why? not sure. I'm not sure why you would want to do it. I, yeah. I don't. I don't agree with it. I don't see it. And either, then you'd dude. have to reconstruct some of the the course if you did that. But there's been talk that maybe you'd want to do that because the ninth can be so difficult at times for some, and then the 18th is the 18th. I I just I love the walk up 18. I wouldn't change a thing about it. I, I think you keep the tradition of the Masters the way it is. But there's some talk of trying to develop more drama, if you can, and reconstruct the course to make it even tougher. I don't necessarily agree with that. No, nah, I'm with you. I, and plus, how are you going to go from the 17th green to the 9th That's tee? part of That's the reconstruction. Impo- oh, no. Nah, nah. I, I'm, I'm nah. with you on that. I mean, Augusta has all the money in the world and all the time, and but uh, do something else. You've been down there a ton a with, your, with your golf business. Yep. How, Love do you, it. how do you get there? Where do you stay? What do you do? I've always wanted to know, how do all these people, how the hell do they get there? Danny, the first time I got there, I walked in, I'm like, what? I mean, looking across acres and acres of perfectly manicured grass, I got down on my knees. <laughs> did you really? I did. I, I wanted you literally to, got down on your I knees. I did. I swear to God, I got a picture of it. And I wanted to take a bite out of grass, but I didn't want to <laughs> damage it in any way. And I had never seen anything like it. So, it, I mean, it is absolutely perfect. There's not a cigarette butt. There's not a, a piece of trash. There's nothing on. And you're like, how? Yeah. And you have thousands of people pounding all over that grass and it, it does start getting a slightly bit worn out in some of the crosswalks you know by sunday but yeah, so people get down there any which way they can so if you find out where augusta is in the middle of nowhere it's absolutely in the middle of nowhere so people will fly into south carolina there's a, a, a town called aiken that's extremely close there's um i i Basically, what I do, what I've always done is if I don't fly straight into Augusta, I just fly into Atlanta and then rent a car. How but far is it from Atlanta? It's about an hour. It just depends on the traffic, but it's about an hour and a half. Oh, that's so. not but that bad. It's back road. It's slow going. It's, you know, there's traffic and things like that. But there is never a place to stay there. I mean, if people are going there to, to Augusta, let's say that you put your name in the lottery and you happen to hit and you happen to get tickets, you're paying exorbitant amount of money for for example the the face value on the ticket for the par three which is a spectacularly cool event because the old guy's still playing it and jack brings his grandkids and the guys have their wives or girlfriends getting for him it's a lot to look at that not, not that i've ever looked but i've heard what's from, wrong with you from a friend, focus on the golf from a friend and um <laughs> <laughs> and you see the hole in ones i stood there and watched was it it was JT and Ricky get back-to-back hole-in-ones on hole number four. I remember. I was sitting right there. It was super, super cool. Um, the, t- the the face value on that ticket is $90. Okay. I had a, an, an old client yes last year call and ask me, could I price a ticket, two tickets, for the par three last year? This past year, 2023. Take a stab and double it. Whatever uh, your stab is, double it. Two fifty, three hundred. It was nineteen hundred. Wow, a ticket, a ticket, not total for the two. Nineteen hundred a, a ticket. ticket. Yeah, that's amazing. And what happened, Danny? In the but year it was that, worth every penny, wasn't it? Absolutely. Well, he he wound up not being able to go because. But in your opinion, it's worth. Oh, if yeah. you're going to go, it's a bucket list. This is 
an event. If you you don't even have to love golf to watch this. It is super super special. And when you go, it it's it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It is so well done. Now, one of the cool things, Danny, you know, you've heard this before. We've talked about it even. The prices are frozen for all of the concession things at like nineteen mid nineteen seventy. I love prices. that part of it. Yeah, you buy you buy in a, a palmetto and. A, Palmetto cheese sandwich was is weird, but it actually tastes pretty good for like a dollar sixty. And so, Danny, I would take a group in there. I, I, you know, I was hosting them, so I'm like, guys, get, get whatever you want. You know, we got fifteen beer, and we got we got pulled pork sandwiches, we got ice cream bars, we got c- cookies, candy, all of this stuff. Forty five sandwiches, and it cost me like forty seven dollars. <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. And I was like. This is unbelievable because if I would have taken these guys and hosted them at the Super Bowl oh, and taken man. them to the Super Bowl, it would have cost me $700. What about the merchandise? Is it all over the place? The, you can the, get it? Yeah, it's all over the place. It is run like the the tightest ship you've ever run. You look at it and go, oh my gosh, I'm not going there to the lines. There could be a thousand people in line, Danny, and it takes you 10 minutes to go through there. And when you walk out, you walk straight to the UPS counter and you send your stuff home. You don't have to carry it around with you. I always put whatever I want, whatever. The thing I like the most, like if it's cold or rainy out, I put, a, put that put that top on and send all the rest home. And then you get home and your stuff is there. It It is, it, it, it's, it couldn't be run. There are, there are businesses that should plug into this and watch the way it's run. It is amazing. Danny, I saw a number. I don't know if this was accurate or not, but the thought that runs through your mind is, how much money do these guys actually make? Sure. Like, what is going on? And I saw a number, and I don't know if it was real or not, but it was from a like a golf publication that said every patron averaged six hundred and seventy-five dollars in merch, just merchandise alone. Yeah. And how many people are allowed on the grounds? They do, they didn't they didn't do the exact numbers, but I was running through things in my head because I've seen. I've been to golf tournaments before, and I know that we're talking about, you know, 25,000, 35,000 people. Yeah, pretty amazing. It is it is so well done, and it is, folks, I know it's crazy expensive, but if you have an opportunity, you got to get there. It is super cool. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. The emails are coming in, jay at jdelsinggolf.com. We'll get to those in our final segment. This is Golf with Jay Delsing, and we're presented by Darty Business Solutions. Are you driving an out-of-warranty car? It's only a matter of time before your out-of-warranty vehicle is in the shop costing you thousands of dollars. Auto repair costs are up nearly 20% from last year, which is four times the rate of inflation. If an unexpected breakdown happened today, would you be ready for that? Well, now you can be with a plan through CarShield. Even if your car is just over three years old, it's still prone to expensive costs. Your car is more than just getting you from point A to point B. Traveling by car is a way of life. From picking up your kids to going to a new restaurant, cars are a daily essential. When you enroll in a car protection plan through CarShield, you can look forward to the following. The price will never go up no matter how many claims you file or no matter how high the mileage on your car increases. CarShield offers protection plans that start as low as $100 per month. That's $100 per month. They have repair coverage for up to 5,000 different parts of your vehicle. Plus, when your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road, you get 24-7 coast-to-coast roadside assistance. You also get complimentary towing and rental car options. CarShield has my back when my car breaks down, and they can have yours too. Call CarShield today at 800-465-6550 or visit carshield.com. It's CarShield, proud sponsor of the Golf with Jay Delsing Show. Family Golf and Learning Center. No matter your age or skill level, Family Golf and Learning Center, located in Kirkwood, has something for you. They've got it all. PGA and LPGA instruction, double-decker driving range, par-3 golf course, track man simulators, a large short-game green design to help you with all your shots around the green, bunkers, rough, and zoysia fairway pitching. 
And now open the Tahoma Bermuda Grass Tees, the best turf to hit from in St. Louis. It's all at Family Golf and Learning Center. To schedule a lesson or to find out more, visit FamilyGolfOnline.com. That's FamilyGolfOnline.com. Family Golf and Learning Center. We make St. Louis better at golf. Darty Business Solutions has been enhancing the business of our customers for the last 37 years. How do we do it? Through our expertise in technology, better use of data and analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. We roll up our sleeves and collaborate. We build applications and effectively communicate with our partner clients to bring their goals and objectives to the finish line. Our award-winning Access Point program is a community game changer. With nearly 100 students in the program, mostly young African-American females are making between $55,000 and $60,000 per year right out of high school. That's right, $55,000 to $60,000 a year right after high school graduation. That's when they begin their training. CEO Ron Darty believes the talent is equally distributed, but access to that opportunity is not. So here's Access Point, providing more and more opportunity for those in and around our community. It's Darty Business Solutions. For the best in Italian cuisine in St. Louis, look no further than Paul Mano's, located in Chesterfield. It's traditional Italian cooking, and their best ingredient, It's their tradition. It's cooking like Paul's grandmother used to make and like his mother still prepares today. There are no corners cut at Paul Mano's. From greeting you at the door to the pasta you'll share with your family, Paul Mano's is committed to bringing you their very best anytime you share a meal at their place. It's Paul Mano's located in Chesterfield. Okay, so you know Marcone is the largest distributor of GE parts in North America. Check. You know about their support for backstoppers, first responders, and our men and women in the military. Check that also. Well, here's their latest community venture. It's called Rees Across America. This year, Marcone will place 1,000 Christmas wreaths on the grave sites of our fallen military heroes in 10 different cemeteries around the country. From Dallas to Delaware, Western New York to Houston, New Jersey to right here at Jefferson Barracks. Each of these locations and more will have wreaths delivered and respectfully placed on a gravesite. Remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and teach the next generation the value of freedom. That's the mission of the Wreaths Across America program. So join the Golf with Jay Delsing show and Marcone and sponsor a wreath, volunteer, or partner with us to support our military. Saturday, December 16th is National Wreaths Across America Day. So get involved. That's Marcone and Wreaths Across America. Hey, St. Louis, Eddie McVeigh here from Maggie O'Brien's. When you head downtown for a concert or cards or blues game, and now for the St. Louis City soccer game, please come see us at Maggie O'Brien's before and after your event. Take our shuttle to and from or stay in-house and watch your favorite team on our multiple high-def TVs. We look forward to seeing you soon at one of our two locations in Sunset Hills on South Lindbergh or downtown at the corner of Market and 20th Street. Union Station is next to us. Heading down the stretch on Golf with Jay Delsing on 101 ESPN. That's Jay Delsing. I'm Dan McLaughlin. A reminder, you can email us, jay at jdelsinggolf.com. Put foursome in the uh, subject matter, and we will select two folks to go out and play golf with us in the spring. Should be a lot of fun. We, we're getting e- we're getting emails, folks. Keep them coming. This is going to be great. We'll, we'll go chase Whitey around. You can help me find my ball. It'll be fun. Now, they don't realize they, they have to pay for it, right? <laughs> No, they don't have to pay for it. We'll take you out for being a loyal listener to the show, and that's Jay at jdelsingolf.com. This is from Tom in South City. A favorite club to go to when struggling. What's the club in your bag that you go to? Heard the tip segment. What's the club you like to go to when you're struggling? Okay, so if you're thinking, if you're referring to struggling off the tee, I go to my three wood. It's my backup driver. It's like driver number two for me, and, and it's, it's treated me very well over the years. If there's a favorite club in my bag, it's probably my 60 degree, which is a 59 and a 58 and a half degree wedge that I use all the time. I'm really good with it around the greens and broken your heart a couple of times yes, with have. a chip in here and there. Broke and, my and, wallet. And, and, <laughs> broke your wallet in half. But um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of it. I mean, 
that's a hard question to to answer because it really depends on the situation. You know sure. what I mean? When you're putting and your putting feels off, that putter in your hand just sucks. Well, you know? I think and Tom just was like mostly f- referring to off the tee. Yeah, off yeah. the tee. I love the three wood. When I was a kid, though, Danny, it was a one iron. I had a one iron all the time. When my driver was going sideways, I could take that one iron, hit it. Back in the day, you know, two hundred sixty-five yards, two hundred seventy yards, pretty much down the middle. It it was it was a, a big club, big big deal for me then. Mike in Illinois, what type of putter do you use? Well. That's a good question, Mike. I got an old beat up teardrop that I've that I've loved and used for probably the last ten years. But just recently I told Danny Mac, I said, you know, D, I think I'm falling out of love with this guy for a while. I'm gonna send her back to the old scrapyard down in my basement and I'm gonna go get out one of my old Camerons. You were just taking her out of out of play for a little bit. Yeah, she's, she, she she's had to be you know, set, taken set out. down a little bit. Yeah. You yep. need to understand that, that like you're in charge. Being in, a, in the starting lineup is not a privilege. <laughs> 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 we're kidding. That putter has got oh if if metal you drag your putter if, on on the on, oh of course I do on the asphalt of I don't understand I do. it if that putter could have bruising oh it's all bruised it'd be all, all bruised it's broken got bones lead tape it's got ding dings in it it's got chips out of it it's got swear if swear marks could be oh. seen on it. Yeah. If that putter could talk, oh yeah, it can fly. <laughs> it's 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 aerodynamic in itself. It's 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 um it's a multi-purpose club, and so right now I'm using an old Scotty Cameron, and uh, and it's been working. It's been working very uh, very well. I can attest. <laughs> this is uh, from Baldwin Sally. Hey guys, heard you talking about last week the swings of LPGA Tour players being technically great. Why I love is it? This. Sally, one of the things that the LPGA Tour players do is because they don't have the extreme speed that the men do. Now, Nelly Corder's got a hell of a lot of speed. Lexi Thompson has got a hell of a lot of speed, but not up in that 120, 130 mile an hour range, which is off the reservation. These girls are technically sound because they work on their rhythm so much it, it it's just spectacular to watch sally and that is why they hit the ball so well and you watch them and you're like damn i want to swing like that i mean i've told this story before but i'll tell it again we're with the fox golf team and i'm sitting there with greg norman and scott mccarran and i went to college with mac you know and we're watching these girls swing and we're like i gotta go hit some balls i mean i not one girl is on that range over swinging. And I went and hit balls with McCarran that afternoon. I think after seven balls, I was like, nah, give me two. I'm whacking this thing hard. You sure. Know? And my swing doesn't look to the naked eye like I'm. Not at all. But I'm I'm, I'm trying to hit it. Yeah. I, I'm trying to hit it hard. Let's go West County. Um, this is Luke. And he asks, he says, guys, heard you talking about Jack and Tiger earlier in the show. In their primes, who you taking? <sighs> It's a tough question. I know you've talked about this before, but it's who are you so taking? Danny, it's it's like comparing who's the best center fielder, um, uh, Joe DiMaggio or, you know. I would say some, defensively, you say, you say like Jim Edmonds, Kurt Flood. Who yeah, you t- it's different yeah. generations. Right. I mean, how are you, you going to bet against Kurt Flood back in the 60s and 70s? You're not. Right. And so I just I hate this, but I'm going to take Tiger. Only because of the win percentage. And I'll, and I'll tell you this. When Tiger was in his prime, Tiger won at a 24% clip. That's unbelievable. Tiger, Tiger did not play as much as Jack. Tiger did not miss as many cuts as Jack. And people are going to say, you didn't have the great player. Ty, Jack had to play against Tom Watson. Tiger, baloney. Tiger had to play against Ernie Els. Tiger had to play against Greg Norman. Tiger had to play against, there's Hall of Famers all over the place. All over over the place there and and there's way better players in tiger's generation from a field perspective back in the day when you only had the top 60 there were a hand there were 20 guys that could win an event back then now you've got every single guy in the field is capable of winning so i don't buy into the 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 tiger didn't have to compete it's just that tiger was so much better and i'll say this again and i love jack nicholas and if you made me vote on what the record's like now on who the best player in the world is i'm gonna say jack nicholas but here's why here's where i'm going with this danny and i think you know if tiger doesn't if Tiger manages himself better off the course, which is a massive if, 
and it's it's if pigs had wings sort of things, they'd mm-hmm. be eagles, right? If he did, Tiger would have had 150 wins and 30 majors. Yeah, we wouldn't even be opinion. talking about nope, it. Nope, we wouldn't be talking about it. And and Jack has said as much. He has said as much. If that didn't happen and that whole fiasco in 2009, right after Thanksgiving, didn't happen. But it did. And so my book is Jack's the best player of all time, but take him in their prime. Tiger was on a heater like nobody else. And it turned out, unfortunately, to be a heater because he wasn't able to sustain it over the, 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 the duration. Steve in North County. Jay, thanks for representing North County all these years. Do you have any insight into what Normandy will look like going forward? I, I do. And, Steve, thank you for the, for the kind words. And I'm, I'm proud and I'm honored to be part of the North County contingent. You know, we're, um, they're the, we're the North County hillbillies and we're proud of it. And I'm s- sitting right next to a South County hillbilly. And he's South proud, city. South city hillbilly. He's proud of that too. So, South city, buddy. So, you got to get that yeah, right. Get that right. Man, I told Mike Keogh, he was from North County. He said, hey, I'm from North city. Don't go <laughs> thought me out there with you guys. It's so good. We got to get Mike on the show, by the way. But, and he'll and, do it. But, but anyway, um, Normandy is going to look absolutely stunning. It's not going to look much like it does. I think it's it's going to be so the 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 turf and and the grow in and just the way that it's it's just going to be spectacular. And what's really super cool if we get this thing done right, there's going to be an endowment there, Danny, where locals can play for next to nothing. So will they, and that's really important. Will to the me. configuration change much? I, that I'm, uh, or is it just uh, kind of more of an overhaul, clean up uh, everything? Yeah, it's uh, definitely overhaul, clean up everything. There's going to be some changes, but I don't think it's going to be too dramatic because there's certain amount they're 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 limited with the amount of land, and so I think I even heard Jack say the routing is going to pretty much stay the same. Some little minor tweaks here and there, but it'll be spectacular. Okay, final question. Uh, I guys, love these questions, folks. Keep them coming in, please. Jay at jdelsongolf.com. And this is from Columbia, Missouri. Lisa, um, heard you guys talking about Play Yellow. So, Jay, how did it get involved with you, the Play Yellow initiative that you were part of this past week? Well, the Play Yellow initiative was just spectacular. Barbara Nicholas and Jack created the Play Yellow. As you guys know, Tiger Woods wears his red shirt for Sunday, and that's his power red and all that. Jack had the yellow, and it went down through this whole um, thing with Barbara Nicholas's ministers. Uh, you know, there was, there was a young boy that like we was, explained earlier, yeah, yeah the young the, boy that the, passed the, away. He was and, afflicted right. with the yeah, – and so – and his favorite color was yellow, and Jack was like, I'm going to do this in honor of you. And the kid, young man's like, yellow's my lucky color. Well, Jack's adopted the yellow. Well, Barbara and Jack have taken it to a different level, and it's all on fundraising – it's all about awareness and all about trying to grow the game and, and, and to, to raise money for those in need. And so the Play Yellow Initiative is, is, is a nationwide initiative, and I was fortunate enough to have Sue Richter, who's just a dial. She's a Bell Reeve member and a member um, at, um, I think she's a member at, at either Bogey Hills or at um, um, where Bummer is, uh, Whitmore, I think. Uh, Whitmore, but, but yeah. Anyway, um, beside the point, she uh, she said, would you consider coming on board and talking to these folks at Play Yellow? And I, and, it, and you know what I think of the Nicholases, and Barbara yeah. Nicholas is a rock star, and we've got, you know, she's sent christening gifts to the birth of each one. I'm like, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. And so we talked about it, and you know what's neat, Danny? There's uh, un- unfortunately there's kind of a divide in the city about Children's Hospital versus Cardinal Glennon and some people. Uh, these guys are right down the middle. It's like we're giving Children's. I think we're going to be able to give Children's a million bucks, and I think we're going to be able to give Cardinal Glennon a million bucks this year. And it is, and I'm so proud and honored to be part of that. So they approached me. I approached you. We're both wearing play yellow lapels. Just happens to be on on our pullovers that we're wearing this morning, and. It, it, I, I, it, it's just a, you know, it, it was, it, and again, it reminisce, uh, I reminisce about your event and we're sitting there and we're doing this for kids and we're, we're, we're raising money for kids and we're bidding on items and, you know, sending golf balls and doing all this stuff because we're, we're trying to make somebody's life better through a game that's taking great care of me. 
Well put. Hey, man, this has been a great show, as always. I love it. I love it. I, I could keep going and going. you got to turn my mic off. Jay Delsing's show, Golf with Jay Delsing, is heard every Sunday, 8 to 10, here on 101 ESPN. And, Jay, how do we end the show?